2016, Module 10, Part 2. We are looking at another form of data analysis, what-if analysis, called a one-variable data table. So we're going to start out with our income worksheet, and again, I'm going to make a copy of that. We're going to move it to the end, and we're going to call it DT for data table. Oops, escape. Escape up here. A35. DT1 for data table one variable. So the first thing we have to do is create the setup for our data table. We're going to call this setup break-even analysis. So we're going to click on D4. And we're going to type in that heading break-even analysis. Then we're going to select D4 through G4. Merge and center, and we're going to apply a cell style of headings 3. Next, we're going to enter some column headings. So in D5, we're going to type units sold. And then going across the row, we're going to put revenue, expenses, and in G5, net income. Net range of cells, we're going to center and then apply a cell style of accent 2. Next, we need to set up a row of formulas that will tell our data table where to put the inputs and where to find the results. So in the first, the units of sold in D6, that's located in B6. So you're going to put a formula in there that says equal B6. In E6, we want the formula that will reference the total revenue cell which is B26. And then we want the total expenses in B27. And finally, we want the net income, which is down in B28. So once we have all those formulas in, these become the results cells. We're going to format those with a cell style of 40% accent 3. Now, the next thing we need to input are the values that we want to put in for the units of sold, units produced and sold. So we're going to start with 2,000. and then go up in increments of 2,000. So once it can see our pattern, hopefully it'll see it, it does, we can use autofill to fill that in to 18,000 and put them as a comma format with no decimals. The range is here where we're going to have numbers we're going to put those in as an accounting with no decimals. Okay, so let's save our work. And now we have our data table set up. So in just a moment, when we select the data table feature, what it's going to do is it's going to take 2,000 and insert it into B6, where we have the units produced and sold. It's going to run all the calculations 
and then return for me the total revenue, total expenses, and net income. Then it's going to put 4000 in and return revenue, expenses, and net income. With the data tables, if you're only changing one variable, so we're only putting in units sold, everything else is staying the same, then we can view multiple result cells. All right, so let's create our data table. You want to start out by selecting your report, or excuse me, your result row, and then all the rows with input values. So you want to select D6 through G15. Now you're going to go to the data tab and you're going to choose what if analysis and data table. Now the way you want to look at this data table dialog box here is row input cell is asking you the top row of numbers are those input values that you're going to put into a cell over here. If the answer is yes, then what cell do they go into? Well, in our case, these are result cells. So no, they do not become input. So we're going to leave that cell blank. We're going to go down to the column input. It said these numbers that are along the left column. Do those get input into your formula as input cells? And if they do, where do they go? Are, are units produced and sold? So they're going to go here in B6. If you're doing a one variable data table, you will have one blank box on this screen. So we're going to click OK. You can see how quickly it brought in the revenue, expenses, and net income for every option. Now if we wanted to see a chart that would show us, they call it a CVP, CVP chart, cost, revenue, profit, because what we want to see is where do the lines for revenue and expenses cross. Now to select that and create that, we're going to start out by selecting headings because remember when we do charts we want the headings so that we Excel can use those for labeling. So you're going to select the range D5 through G15 and you're going to go to insert and in the chart group you want to find the button that says scatter XY or bubble. Then you're going to find the option, oh, excuse me, we did that wrong. We don't want the net income line. Choose just D through F. We do not want to chart net income. Now go into the scatter and choose the scatter with straight lines. So you can see one's a revenue line and one is an expense line. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move that chart so we don't want it to cover up our table. So it's going to start in D16, just below our data. And then it's going to end in G28. So I'm going to shrink it up a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the chart area. If you think back to module 4, 
we're going to go to the format, make sure chart area is selected, and change the fill to gray 25% background 2. Next, we're going to click on the plot area. Make sure that this says plot area. And we're going to change that fill to white. The next thing we're going to do is use the chart styles. And we're going to change the color. We want you to go down to color 3. Now it has the revenues as a green line expenses as an orange. And if we click off our chart, you can see the point where the two lines intersect. That intersection is your break-even point. On the break-even point, it shows us where the profit is neither positive or negative, it is exactly zero. The last thing I'm going to do is delete that chart title to make my chart a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and save our work. And let's see if we can get the chart and the numbers. There we go, both visible. And let's look at what happens if we make a change to our data. So if I type 300 as my unit price, notice that right now my break-even point was somewhere between 8,000 and 10,000. And notice with that change, my break-even point moved up here closer to between 12 and 14,000. So once you have the data table created, if you want to manipulate other items, you can change one item and it will adjust both the numbers and the chart that is associated with them. So I'm going to go ahead and save our work. And that concludes working with a one variable data table.